Hello, thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together to take on various topics that tend to cross one's path when we set out upon this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hello, I am Rob Stenzinger. I do user experience, design facilitation and coaching, and I, well, I make video games too. Hi, Jersey. Good to, good to see you again, Rob. Good to see you. And here we are, our second outing into streaming on Twitch. Didn't get a whole lot of feedback on how it turned out for folks, but I mean, we did post it to YouTube afterwards and, and into the podcast feed. So I imagine that for the most part, it really didn't make any kind of like a substantial difference to anybody's experience who's getting the show in, in a time shifted manner. Yeah, ex yeah, right. Exactly. It's the that group that would um, be around for the live recordings that is most affected. Uh, and but then again, it's you know, there's there's folks who did pick us up on on um, on Twitch, and uh, that's it's neat to see that starting to to happen. Uh, I'm I'm really curious. This is a fun experiment, and you know, join us, follow us on Twitch. You know, twitch.tv slash Lean Into Art. Twitch. It's got a lot Twitch. of little messaging built into it and stuff. You know, the, mm -hmm. the chat like we we had back in the Google uh, streaming days. You know, like I, I say that like it's a long time ago, but it's not. But it, you know, it has built in chat. The and I don't know. It's kind of um, yeah. And you you can follow us there and, and get notifications when we start streaming and all that too. Plus, you're on Twitch and I'm on Twitch as well. That's true. That's true. We're we're both on Twitch individually, individually, and I have every intention of doing some streaming of my art on there. Um, maybe after this week, because I've been uh, traveling back and forth to Michigan this week doing some teaching. Um, doing some mentoring, which I think we're going to talk about today a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, oh, I'm getting a, I'm getting, getting a notification from OBS saying, oh, your internet uh, connection is unstable. It's unstable. Well, wow. are you noticing any lag, Rob? Uh, no, I'm not noticing any lag. Uh, okay. you know, I definitely feel like this is a new production thing. So I may not have noticed because you know, I'm, I'm like juggling. I'm looking at two windows because I'm on my user. Because since I have a couple of followers on Twitch, I there's a thing you can do where you can do slash host and then the other stream. And so I'm streaming Lean Into Art on my channel. Oh, are you really? <laughs> also, right now. <laughs> um, and all that, you know, feeds into, you know, the viewers for, for this or, or whatever. But, I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. So I could I could be like simulcasting this to my stream as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You have to show me about how so, to do that later. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, um, it, it's really quick. I'll just say it. So you just do slash host in your chat in your chat on your channel space name of the other channel. Enter, boom. Slash host name of the other channel in yep. my chat. Yep. Okay, that sounds easy enough. <laughs> um, but I was I was trying to hint at a moment ago that uh, we had a topic this week and it has to do with it's it's semi related to something that I've been doing this week uh, or more or less like um, celebrating the fruits of labor in that I went and visited with a former student of mine who is now teaching comics classes in Ann Arbor and it got me thinking a lot about this topic of like uh mentoring being a part of a uh, another creative person's life in some kind of a um advisory re reflecting guidance capacity maybe even like just like like creative um coach or partner along that journey right we'll explore all those different layers of it i'm sure as we go through the topic but um i'll start with the question that i put in the episode description which is is like who needs a mentor i've got youtube you know, there's a hundred thousand tutorials on YouTube. There's millions of tutorials on YouTube. If I want to know how to do any particular skill, I'll just go do those searches. As a matter of fact, I was talking with, I was, oh, I was listening to a really great podcast and I don't have my phone with me, so I can't look up the name of the podcast. Um, and I'll put it in the show notes, but it's, it's two art teachers who are talking about, um, you know, making art. And one of the things they talked about is how at the beginning of the school year, um, searches for how to draw spike dramatically and then after the school year ends that search drops dramatically and they were kind of expressing dismay saying like no you should be learning year round even in the summertime i know that like the academic year burns you out but like you know you should if you can try to find a way to manage it so that you can continue to like do that learning 
between the school years, um, that that would be great. Um, and and that's all to say that like yeah, there's like YouTube is this fabulous resource for how to learn things. So why even go through all of this effort to find a mentor or be a mentor or participate in is a mentor or mentee, right? I have a quick question related, right? Okay. So yeah. it, you're, somehow your description reminds me of something that psh, I've only barely dabbled at seeing. I haven't read a lot of Superman comics. I haven't like rewatched the Superman movies, but what you're describing reminds me almost of like the virtual mentor that Superman had in the, the um, Fortress of Solitude where it's like, you can look at crystals and stuff. Actually, uh, isn't this a part of the, the su super, super girl? TV series too, where they yeah, have kind they, of they like all this that, knowledge yeah. stored in like, you know, rock type thumb drives and they can look yeah. at, you know, all this knowledge. Yes. But it's, uh, it's it, virtual, it, it, right? It's virtual. I mean, in, in the, in the Christopher Reeve movies, it's a little bit more interactive because he can actually like talk to them like people. And I think also like in uh, Voltron legendary defender, Allura had her dad downloaded on a, on a like a hollow drive. Right? right. And she could talk to him and he would interact with her as if he was real, but he's not real, you know? Um, so it's a little bit more advanced than that, but yes, yes, there is, it's, it's virtual. And, uh, while the, breadth of material that is available and, and is is indexed and very searchable especially when we compare it to like the lycos days where we go down memory lane going back to like 90s internet right um at the same time there's there's advantages that uh face-to-face -face meeting has over virtual meeting that i'm sure we will explore as well so how about i hit the music and then we can trans transition over to it how about it all right let's explore Okay, well, there goes the music that's playing to indicate to us, if you're listening to the audio, you just got a little bit of a hint that, oh, we're changing gears. We're moving on to the, 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 the meat of the show, the first section. So mentoring, being mentors and mentees. Um, you want to talk about some of the times that you have participated in this, uh, in either side of the, of the relationship? Yeah, it sounds good. I think um, maybe earlier part earlier in the show, I might do the mentor side and later on, the other side, but uh, let's see. So uh, one of the things that that I remember is, it, let's see, I was I was in high school, sitting in class, and you know, I forget what got essentially called to the principal's office, right? And most of the, most of the time, that was actually neutral or positive news for me. It wasn't like, uh oh, and uh, but it was you know just odd timing. I'm like, who knows what this is about? And it turns out uh, there was this nomination system for people to be uh, uh, chosen as a peer counselor. And that was, it was pretty neat because, it, you know, that recognition. And so it went from being informally, you know, a, a, an ear and, and a, you know, coach mentor to something more, um, well, more formal. And, you know, we even the, the whole class, the, the group of us chosen for that got to this, uh, you know, training and, and it was, it was neat. It was like just this, this, this idea that how much, you know, listening and being there is, it, it's just, it's huge to, to help someone, uh, you know, work through or think through some things that they might be going through. That was pretty neat. And that's like one of the early ones I can rem remember. How about you, Jersey? What, uh, early times when I was a mentor, like, mm -hmm. um, Ellen, I was, or other uh, way, either way. Whatever. No, no, no. I, let's let's stay on let's stay on the theme. Um. So, well, I mean, I've been a teaching artist for twelve years now. I mean, it's twenty nineteen. My first real job as a teaching artist was in two thousand seven, and um, I have been on a regular basis teaching classes on comics since then. So, um, and the classes I teach, like many of them, are uh one off workshops or maybe like a week long workshop in the summertime. Um, but the the majority of what I did up until very recently when I moved to Columbus was um, eight week courses taught three times a year, and the these courses again being taught three times a year for ten plus years, um, I had a lot of students that would repeat repeatedly show up to my classes and grow up with me. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I I was just in I just posted this to my Instagram yesterday. Um, I was up in Ann Arbor to teach a summer camp at the Ann Arbor Arts Center, and the class was taught by my former student, Ellie, who is now 18, graduated high school. I met her when she was 10, right? And she's been a part of my life since then. It's like for the last eight years, she's taken my class year after year. 
and I have, um, so I, I coach and mentor a, a variety of students in various ways. Like some are just like when they're in the class and I'm following along with them as they take the class over and over. And then there's some who it's like, they demonstrate like a real, um, a higher degree of interest and enthusiasm. They show up more eager to do the work and they stick around after class to say, what else can I do? What else do I need to do? How do I, you know, how do I pursue this thing more seriously? And those kids, usually I wind up taking an interest in outside of the classroom in the form of, okay, well, there's an art exhibit that's being put together for A2CAF. Ellie, would you like to do a piece in this thing? Or there's going to be an anthology put together for the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival. Ellie, would you like to contribute to that? Uh, I help, you know, a teacher pagination and how to make mini comics so that she can table at the show. And she tabled at the show for, I want to say, six years. Um, so uh, being being there to help connect her not so much to tell her what to do but to connect her with what she wants to do uh, i'll ask what do you want to do well i want to make i want to make my own comics like you did uh, i want to get them to an audience okay well here's a couple places where you can go and i'll help you learn how to get yourself there so that you know she did her own pagination i didn't do it for her i showed her how it's done she did it and the night before a two calf one year she was at kinko's or fedex until at like you know midnight <laughs> feverishly collating her pages and i see her the next day and she and her mom are just like oh and i'm like yep welcome to the club this is part of making comics <laughs> um so um yeah, so for me, the fun of it is is listening to like listening very carefully to what their interest is, and and trying to get them to clearly define some kind of goals, and offering them what I know, and and offering them the platforms that I have access to to help connect them with people to help them pursue those goals. Maybe they want to pursue comics as a stepping stone to film. Well, I know a couple of filmmakers. I can like reach out to them and see if they would be interested in having you do some intern work with them too. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a lot too to the whole to the whole arrangement. It's very dynamic. That that sort of the the listening aspect, and uh, and you know sometimes I mean it, there's there's a few different hats that you can wear as far as the like when when someone's actually seeking to gain new information that they can specifically apply versus they just are trying to get sort of tr some triangulation and perspective by sharing things and or making connections like you, you like you described because um there, there can be an exchange of well i i might know some more more or different people than you know so then there's a way to um to try to help in that way through connecting uh, and just solving new problems and and progressing along some path that this person really where where they want to want to go right i think sometimes uh there there can be mischaracterizations of of what what like a mentoring arrangement is and mm -hmm. um i wonder uh yeah i wonder so much about it and i don't want to go off the top the 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 you know our notes and stuff but thinking about how sometimes there's you you like mentoring, like where does it happen? It happens in, in organizations oftentimes. Where do people encounter one another, right? So you're there for, oh, so at, at school. Uh, some, some arrangements may be really well set up to get some mentoring going. Other times it may just be sort of unofficial. Mm -hmm. Hey, you look like you're really good at math. Can you help me out here? Like, how is this working? And all of a sudden, like unofficial arrangements pop up. Um, or like for me, I was never pulled aside because someone said, you look like you're really good at math or whatever. Uh, I, it's yeah. It, uh, but there, there are other things where like, um, I, 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 I once did a mentoring exchange with a friend where, um, I taught this friend guitar, uh, you know, basic rock guitar stuff, kind of guitar crash course. And, uh, and they taught me, uh, C programming. Mm. That was, that was pretty neat. So th that was like an exchange, but it wasn't like, and then like jumping ahead to, to sort of that, that unofficial thing in organizations where someone just sort of notices that like, Oh, you have that strength. I want to talk with you more about that. I'm interested. And I think it'd be neat if, if that were just more uh, nourished, right? It's like there's, there's, there's untapped connections as far as how people can help one another in organizations. So just, uh, you know, that, that sort of matchmaking and saying, yeah, that's good. Keep doing that. Um, 
make make it important and valued um, mm-hmm. because a lot of times it's it's I've been in organizations where it's important and valued, and then I've had um, I've had many times in my career super lucky, and I, I feel great that this has happened where I would just officially be um, um, I had an intern arrangement. Hey, we're bringing someone new in. Can they sit on your team? And you, can you teach them the the basics of web stuff and get them up and running? Give them some tasks and all that. Super fun. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, in especially in the early days of mentoring, um, I would teach juggling as well. <laughs> because I'm like, all right, let's take a break from the computer and learn how to juggle. So yeah, I how I'm just curious what you think about this. How is what we're talking about different than apprenticeships? Like, how is when we talk about mentoring, how does that differ from taking on an apprentice? I think apprenticeship happens. Um, it's. I, I don't, um, I'm, I'm only speaking from my knowledge and understanding, but I think an apprenticeship infers more of a trade skill background than an academic background. So, um, but, but functionally it's really, really similar. Um, so if, if like sort of in my career, when I first became, was an intern, I, that was more of an apprenticeship because I came from a background of being self-taught and was, able to land an intern gig, uh, many, many years ago. But then, uh, that, you know, so typically an internship comes, it, it's, it's like the, um, so formal education programming, right? Where at this stage in your learning, you need to get experience and this institution will get feedback based on your, you know, how you work in an, in the, in an organization. And, and try to apply your skills that you're learning here. That typically is an internship, whereas an apprenticeship is Joe showing up and someone says, would you like to be more um, official uh, on your knowledge? Both situations. Hey, Rob, you still there? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we had we had a, a a little bit of a a lag situation where a lot of that uh, talking that you did got like clipped off, and oh, I I right. don't know where the bandwidth uh, crunching is happening, but uh, well, Roger that. Um, so let's see. I don't really I think I have pretty good ping time. So what uh, should I recap real quick? Or yeah, if you could if you could summarize that real quick. Um, all right. So in summary, I think internship infers um, an arrangement with more of a formal academic background. And it's the, your internship experience is meant to feed into your academic uh, accomplishments. And then uh, the uh, apprenticeship is more of the, um, you're an individual uh, just working to gain skill in a trade. And that trade has some mechanism to have people early in their journey be able to join up and potentially gain more experience in an applied way, both arrangements should be paid. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. I guess we should say that too. <laughs> um, okay. Well, can we talk about some times when you were a mentee and what that felt like for you and what that looked like? Yeah, sure. Um, so as a, as a mentee, I think, um, I think I have, I've participated in the whole like, virtual, you know, mentee situation quite a bit. Right. I mean, even, um, you know, once upon a time, I, I would, I, I don't know, like off and on, even still, I would call you a mentor Jersey where like we started a podcast together. You had a lot more experience doing podcasting. Uh, before that you, I was a, a, particip- a participant in a community that, uh, you and, and some partners, uh, hosted and facilitated. And I was learning through there. Uh, but oftentimes the, the mentoring is, is, it's the YouTube videos, it's the blog articles, and I sort of nominate where the strongest signals are coming from and start just working that into my info stream and my day to day where this is, and then I'm influenced by the, uh, the ideas and recommendations and choices of, of these folks who may not know who I am, but, but they are, um, providing a lot of the function of a mentor, maybe not all of it as far as the feedback and stuff. Um, as far as feedback and whatnot, it's like when I have, I've 
that whole script, I kind of, I don't know if what got cut off, but like working in an inst- working in a large organization, sometimes I've been recognized and people, you know, come to me in, in an unofficial arrangement. But then I often have seen other people doing things that I want to get better at. And then I, if it's well met and if they don't mind me asking them questions and, and delving into things from time to time, uh, I, I learn a lot and I take things away, even though there hasn't been this, this official label put on the arrangement and expectations around this label of mentor mentee. But I've received I, a lot I, of mentoring like that. I, I have a feeling in the second half of the show, when we start to like define more clearly what uh, a mentor and mentee do in our experience, we will come to understand that like regardless of label, it's more of a behavior pattern that we're using as our definition rather than an official decree from some organization or some kind of formal arrangement between two people shaking hands. But um, in my case, I know that um, I had two very important mentors in my life uh, with regard to my teaching art arts work. I, I haven't had, I haven't had that many comics mentors. Um, I mean, Dan Mishkin has been a, uh, an unofficial guide to me in a lot of ways. And I know I've deferred to him on many things in when I talk about certain topics in, in comics and my understanding of how comics work is both informed by his work and my affiliation and friendship and partnership with him. Um, but I, when I think of um, another aspect of mentoring, it's not just about guidance and skill development. It's also about like um, helping the mentee understand the wider options available to them in the field that they wish to go into. When you are first starting out, you don't know, like, so like, for instance, when I go back to like, like say 1993, 1992, when I was like, I'm going to be a comic book artist. I'm like, what does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to draw Spider-Man. Okay. How do you get to draw Spider-Man? I don't know. I guess I do the Marvel tryout book and mail it in. Well, that was like, like 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I got to go to New York and start walking around with, with portfolio samples. Don't I? Right. I don't know. Where do I go? Uh, Oh, I can go to comic cons and start talking to people, maybe start to figure it out. Right. Like, I don't know. I didn't know at the ripe old age of 17, 18, like what, where to even turn to start getting people to see my stuff so I could potentially get some gigs. Um, Whereas a mentor can say, okay, I see what you're doing here. And what you're doing here is really awesome in these three ways. Here are five people who need to see you do that. Right. So, for instance, in 2007, I worked with the Arts of Michigan Literacy Arts Comic Book Project, where I visited all these Detroit public schools. And I had one official mentor in this U of M professor who I've often described as like my Obi-Wan Kenobi, the, the Jedi Knight who trained me uh, on teaching. And she was a professor at the University of Michigan. But then there was also the director of the program that I was a part of. And she was the one who said, OK, look, I know some people at the Kennedy Center, at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Perform- Performing Arts. I used to work there myself and we used to do programming where we teach teachers how to do uh, you know, to integrate different kinds of arts into their classrooms. It's like, you need to meet, you need to talk to these people, right? Like I had no idea. I was like, Oh really? The John F. Kennedy center has a, I mean, I know about the Kennedy center, like they host various awards programs, but I didn't know they had a program to train teachers. Right. And so this mentor had a broader and more and richer and deeper understanding of what the industry is and how I can places where I can fulfill needs they see a cascading, you know, array of things that I can plug into that I had no knowledge of, right? And so that's another thing that a mentor does as well is help more directly connect the mentee with places where they can, uh, where their value can shine more clearly and directly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, that's something that I often. But I often like to do is is if I'm typically uh, you know, just sort of combing and looking, have a radar for uh, teaching opportunities, and when I'm in an arrangement and having you know active conversations with a with a, a mentee, I I try to do that matchmaking, and and uh, even if it's not necessarily something they were planning on, it's uh, it's just a great learning experience that we at least have the conversation where. Um, hey, do you mind doing presentations with a group? And honestly, later in my career, it almost was that went away as a concern. Earlier in my career, a lot of lot of uh, mentees were like, "Yeah, I don't like talking in front of people," you know, that kind of thing. But later on, it became more and more of a, um, "Well, yeah, right on." You know, point me in the point me uh, to a class. So you know, I happily do present and whatnot. So um, yeah, that's that's really that's some great matchmaking to do. 
Um, so let's see. I'm wondering, uh, is there one more point you wanted to cover here before we? Um, I guess if I were to cover one more point, and this would also like be a bridge to before we take a break, is um, a mentor, mentee. Like so, like something that I gained a lot out of having a mentor is not only having somebody who understands the the larger industry, but somebody who can tell me if I'm even going in the right direction. Right. Um, when I first started teaching. I knew when it felt weird and I knew when it felt good, but I didn't know why. And having just that person there observing me in the room saying like, no, this is what you did. This is what you did that was awesome. And this is what you did. Well, maybe next time try something a little bit different there. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily telling me what to do, but just giving me some feedback from the sidelines to like help me course correct a, a little bit more. Even if I didn't understand why I was doing it at the time, in retrospect, I see what they were doing, how they were like providing bumpers on the lanes of the bowling alley so that I didn't go into the gutter. Well, it's, it's the, the sharing of expertise and context to give you a language that you didn't have before. And, and going through that is fantastic. And it's like you've, you have this new, this new handle, this new tool that, that didn't exist before. And mm -hmm. uh, having somewhere to exchange those ideas in that context, it's sort of um, like if your job is to crank the widgets and, and you know, get the things done and, and hit the deadline and all these features or whatever it is, a lot of times that isn't the the greatest learning space you do know, whereas if you can at least have some side channel with a mentor or working when you're working with a mentee and you hold us the safe space to um get new observations on all the stuff that's going on yeah um, it's you you can get more out of it where the, the the normal cranking widgets becomes more you know more meaningful learning and uh yeah. And that's where I'm, I, that's where I go like, gosh, I wish this was, I know at some workplaces, this is very normal and, and, and official, but, but um, it, yeah. And I, I hope it becomes more common. Yeah. I, I hope so too, because it is, it is a very, very rich and accelerated way of learning. Um, you're not, you're not just like bouncing into the walls on your own. Right. And like maybe getting some feedback from somebody who's been kind of paying attention to you. Um, but yeah, it's, it would be cool if there was more of that. Okay, so how about in um, a minute and thirty seconds, let's take a break and let's um, we'll come back and we'll talk about like some of the pros and cons, like some of the the value. I don't know if there should be any cons. Probably be mostly pros. Like, what's the value of of uh, mentoring? What value have we received out of it? And what value have we received out of uh, being a mentee and mentor? And then maybe even talking about uh, this thing that you wrote in the notes called reverse mentoring, which maybe we can get okay. to if there's time in this episode. <laughs> okay. So I'm fine with just having buckets and buckets of positive reinforcement about mentoring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well, we'll do that in about a minute and a half. But before we do that, we got to thank the people who make this show possible. And those folks are the people who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash lean into art. Easy enough to remember, right? What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in me and Rob and you believe in what we do, you can support us, make, help make the show sustainable for as little as a dollar a month. And if enough people do that, then Rob and, Rob and I will be compensated for the time that we uh, take to put this show together. I want to thank five people who've been doing exactly that. First up, Becca Hilburn. Thank you, Becca, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Becca on Twitter, actually on all social media, at Natto Soup. Also, Rachel Ross. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, longtime supporter of the show. You can find Rachel on Twitter at NYC, as in New York City. Terrace, T-E-R-I-S. Thank you, Rachel. Also, Mark Falk. Thank you, Mark, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Mark on Twitter at Radimir. And J.S. Taskis. Thank you, JS. You can find JS on Twitter at J-S-T-A-S-K-I-S. -S. All these will be linked to the show notes, by the way. And finally, Shane W. Smith. Thank you, Shane. You can find Shane on Twitter at Shane underscore W underscore Smith. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art, where you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record in, uh, once a month, uh, just for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want with a safe space with fellow leaners. Patreon.com slash lean into art. Thank you for supporting us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I need to hit one more little piece of music so we can get into the second half of the show. How about... There we go. <laughs> you still can't hear it though, Rob, can you? <laughs> I can't hear it. I but he, he does a little movement to indicate like I'm with you. I'm with you. I know this music happening and I'm in I'm 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 here for it. <laughs> I feel the energy.
<laughs> there we go. <sighs> okay. Okay. So, you know, why do it? And maybe even like some thoughts on how to find a mentor um, after we've like done all this positive reinforcement about this thing. Um, what are your reflections on this? Like, why do it? What's what's the value of doing it? Um, before you, I'll let you like wind up before you pitch your thoughts. Is that I, I was thinking about this recently. The first time I took on uh, a production assistant, a mentee, like in a formal way where we agreed to do something, I had this like this this thrill of hesitation. This like, ooh, what am I about to do? And I recently uh, experienced it in a very visceral way in that, and I, I did this as an Instagram story. Um, I had a, a stray cat come in through my patio door recently, and like it just like walked into the apartment, made itself comfortable. It was very, it was very loving and very affectionate. And I'm like, you can't, it didn't have a collar, but I'm like, you can't be a stray. You're just way too, you too friendly to people to be a stray. But I got it some food. I got it some water. And I went around to my neighbor's doors knocking on them. Like, is anybody missing a cat? Nobody's answering the doors. It's in the middle of the afternoon. And so I'm, I'm, I'm like loving this cat. I haven't, you know, pet a cat in months, right? Since my, well, yeah, it's been at, as of this month, uh, uh, a year since my cat Maggie passed. And so I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I wonder if this is like just meant to be this cat found me. And then the moment I thought that I had this, 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 like this clench in my chest, like, do I want to be responsible for another life again? You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. am I ready for this? Am I ready to commit to this little life the way I did before, you know? And, uh, End of the story is, is that after, you know, five o'clock or six o'clock when everybody was getting home from work, I went around, knocked on the doors again, and I found the cat's owner. And indeed, it belonged to my neighbor. But, um, but so I was like, whew, it was like, that was, that was lovely, but I'm glad for now that I'm staying catless. Uh, and I thought like when, when I made my first mentoring relationship, I was like, ooh, what am I getting myself into here? You know, I've had like a very comfortable life, just working from home, enjoying making comics, do I want to commit to guiding this young life and, you know, taking time out of my day to help teach them to do what I do in, in, in not in a classroom capacity? Oh, uh, I don't know. Right. So like there's there's a cost to doing this or at least a perceived cost. Now, having put in that like front loaded hesitation, how would you counter that? What what value have you received out of it, Rob? Uh, well, value selfishly is learning and seeing how you can help others. Because in early days, I remember, uh, let's see. So I went from working on my video game company and web development side business and being a janitor at night, whatever, right? So that was my side, side hustle and day job thing, or it was a night job uh, 25 years ago, right? And then suddenly getting into the you know, that new, you know, corporate gig and, you know, doing the web development full time, whatever, because, you know, I'm, I'm compressing the story. And after not too long was in the position to be mentoring because, because it was a, 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 a actually a natural function already working in the organization where interns would come in every year. And I was enthusiastic and happy to to try, even though I didn't know what, is, what I was getting into. When I first got into it, I I didn't appreciate the, the how much fresh perspective was going to happen. And so I was like, oh gosh, I need to help this person contextualize their skill in this corporate environment. Ah, <laughs> and then then I so after some na naivety in my part, and then aha, I started to realize, okay, I'm I'm learning a lot now helping describe some things that get this person up and running and productive. And when they have questions, I'm all, I'm there to help and whatnot. And when they have questions, it is a time investment. So it takes some juggling as far as my current deliver things I need to deliver and commitments and all that stuff. Uh, so I felt that cost, but I, you know, I've just always been, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I wasn't super excited about learning stuff. Right. And, and like even that transition, I was, you know, doing a uh, I was in a completely different industry and I was able to make that flip because of, you know, demonstrating ex value and uh, through a lot of hands-on learning. So I was like, hands-on learning, I'm here to do that all day, every day. So totally fine with that. Uh, but the mentor, being a mentee, I, after a while, I was like, gosh, I'm a mentor a lot. I love it. But 
I could level up better if I had, uh, if I, what if I make this more official, right? And so I once reached out and um, because, you know, that, that's the, so the value of mentoring, if you're willing to, you know, absorb some costs for it, um, you're going to find your own relationship for why you do that too. And I think that's a little bit in this, this little anecdote. So I started looking at like, who do I work with that I'm inspired by? And I learn a lot when I'm in a meeting, I take a lot of notes about the things they say and they, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm like already fired up and learning from this person. And so I end up scheduling a, a one-on-one coffee with them. And, you know, we, we talk about a few different things, but I'm, I'm like, I'm like sweaty here. Like I'm going I'm about to ask this person to prom because I'm like, how do you ask to, for a mentor? How, how come I've been a mentor so much? And, and I didn't notice how people were asking me. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did I end up in this situation? And so yeah. I finally, well, we build, I build up to it and we, I ask this person, I'm, I'm like, I'm wondering if, if we could have an ongoing mentoring arrangement. And they were like, no. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I, I thought, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you know, and I was like, I felt like, uh, felt a lot like we talked about in the last episode, rejection. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. And, you know, after I got over that, I thought, gosh, wait a minute. This person has, has thought about mentoring so seriously and they have their own system for it. I fall outside of their system for mentoring. And it's kind of like I'm, and this is where there's, I think some people, when they calculate, like, why would I go about this? Um, they have sort of an ongoing plan for their career that isn't about this general excitement for learning and sharing, right? It's about um, like, well, specific roles and saying that if this is, if you're heading toward, you know, this castle or that mountain or this adventure or that adventure, I'm here for you, but not these, not any of these other adventures. And, uh, and so I saw there was a mismatch and uh, which helped give meaning to the rejection, but um, you know, I, it, and I think it was a useful thing to investigate and, and consider afterward. But, um, and I think folks in the audience might be, have, might have that as well. It's like, why would I get into just a haphazard mentoring situation? Um, and I, I guess I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but, uh, but you may have criteria that's, that are, that are, you know, like really like role specific or skill specific, goal specific. So. Was this okay? There's a couple things that I want to unpack in everything that you just shared, but like one thing just like immediately that comes to mind is um, was this person an especially interesting, dynamic, and compelling leader? Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, I, I wonder about that too. Like, it's like, so when we're looking for a mentor, it can be very easy to get confused. I don't want to say confused or almost bewildered by a charm about a person and it's worth stepping back and asking yourself, well, are they doing what I want to be doing? Like specifically, are they operating in a way and in a world and in the context that I want to be part of? And that's going to require us to actually do some analysis on our, on our own, uh, like stepping back and look at what we want out of this stuff. And maybe we don't know because earlier we were talking about um, how, you know, when I was first starting in teaching arts, I had no idea what I was stepping into. I knew that I I needed to make extra money. I liked working with kids and I loved telling kids about comics. Okay, right? That everything seems to match. <laughs> so far so good. <laughs> so far so good. And then I get into the broader world and I'm like, "Oh, okay, there's places where I do fit in and places where I don't fit in." Um but I didn't know that until I found, you know, a mentor who was able to like point me at the different options. Um so like there may be situations where you bump up against these kinds of frictions like you're describing because you just don't know until you actually engage with and discover that, oh, OK, they're operating in a world that maybe isn't the one that I want to be in. But backing up a few steps back, you talked about also this idea of um, the time cost of helping to teach somebody, but also the learning that happens there. There's a learning I, f I found that happens when you have to formalize language around what you do. When you have to describe what you do to somebody else and, and, and when they look at you and go, but why do it that way? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly where you can have, yeah. Formalizing to the point where you have, you have a how, but you may not have the why yet. Uh huh. And you may yeah. not have a lot of um, backing for the why. <laughs> yeah. Because you can land on something that works, but not know everything about it. Yeah. 
that's yeah and 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 the the mentor mentee relationship goes a long way to help you well this goes back to the whole pokemon theme you teach me and i'll teach you um i remember being at a uh teaching a class where a student was teaching me uh about some some i think it was maya they were like walking me through how maya works and um the hosting org turned to me and they're like who's teaching who here i'm like well this is the way it ideally should be happening right it should be like a, cir- a circular thing but i remember um aaron polk who is a professional colorist now who used to be my production assistant i'm so proud of him he's done so many awesome things with his career um which i take no credit for i'm just grateful to be along for the journey uh, and to be there to like help push in the right ways when the time came but um one of the things that happened was aaron looked at the way i did things early on i was like but why do it that way you know, and I was like, well, because this is just the good way to do it, you know, and like Aaron was like, there's got to be a faster way to do it than that. And so he set this challenge to me and he started searching his ways. I started searching in my ways to like refine it and make it more um, expedient and efficient. And finally, this was like about a year ago, Aaron came to one of my classes uh, to do like a visiting artist thing and was doing some flatting. And while the kids are all working, Aaron turns to me, he's like, hey, Jersey, check this out. I cracked the code and did this little trick in Clip Studio Paint, where it's this tool called um, white, uh, change thickness of line. And you can do it on flats, where if you've got like a little, little like a lot of fine grain, uh, transparent spots in your flats, you just drag the pen over top of it and it closes them all up. And I, I involuntarily went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and the kids all stood up they're like, what happened? What happened? What happened? All the kids gathered around <laughs> and they did, they're like, what's so, what's the big deal? What, what's so important about making pixels go away? But to me and Aaron, it was like this, this culmination of this multi-year quest to make flatting even easier than we'd ever done it before, you know? So oh, that's and there was awesome. This, and there's this triumph on Aaron's part. He's like, he got to like, you know, like impress the the mentor with like how much he's acquired in terms of knowledge and skill in the last couple of years. So it's cool to go back to Master Yoda and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna lift some boxes and I'm gonna lift this mountain. Check it out. Whoop. You know. <laughs> it it is. That dynamic is something that it, I mean it I think it fits with a lot of folks' beliefs, especially if you listen to this show or watch the show. Uh mm-hmm. where participating in learning and sharing what you learn as you go and in arrangements like mentoring, there's a, uh, there's such clarifying and amplifying that, that happens that, that can be in, 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 an enjoyment in itself selfishly. But then when you see that happening in others, all of a sudden you're a part of a dynamic of um, growth and it's, it's great to see. Um, mm-hmm. It's really great to see. And, and um, I, I think anyone who if some some types of classes and learning, um, like I remember, um, let's see, I, I don't know, whatever. So at one point I studied martial arts for a while and, and uh, I made it like to brown belt and taekwondo and, and then, you know, paused my journey there. But like all along the way up, it's so baked into that situation where you have new people coming into class. You were once one of them and you, and as you improve and, and part of the teaching method is is very much encouraging a, a mentoring and an exchange among the students when especially and there's mm-hmm. this there's a lot of tangibility because of the physical motions and the different belts and stuff um where there there's it's easy to do the matchmaking right and mm-hmm. and where it's like oh yeah i've had, you know maybe if you did you know t- took a step back or stood up a little straighter or whatever and and you know like these kinds of little feedback moments are expected and uh and um, encouraged that then contributes to many opportunities to acknowledge this growth and celebrate it. And it creates a situation like that, that I don't know. I mean, I, except when you're collaborating with someone in some official way, like I don't, I just wish it were just more common. I, I didn't even think about that. That that's something that I've been doing in my classes for some time. Is that this idea of um, honoring students who demonstrate leadership capability by giving them a more formal role in the room and encouraging that kind of um, well, like you said, feedback loop. In that, like, if a student shows that they have like real capability and aptitude and a desire to uh, lean in to the work. I'll ask them, I'll say like, hey, look, this week we're teaching uh, Clip Studio Paint. It's really hard for me to get to every student in the room when we're working. So is it cool if somebody raises their hand and I can't get to them, could you go help them? 
right? And that is a way to say to them that like, okay, look, you've leveled up. You you are next level, you know, brown belt, whatever. And as a result of that, you have a responsibility, or I'm asking you to take responsibility for your fellow students who are showing up who were once like you, who were once beginning at this thing and lost. And now can you help me manage this? And, and it, it's a classroom management thing for me, right? Because it helps make the, the room like less chaotic for me. But it also is a signal to the to the beginning students that, oh, if I adhere my if I lean into this and I do the work hard, I could be like a cool kid like this guy that Jersey really digs. Um and it honors the effort that that other student has put in so far, right? And so that creates, and what I've been told by some parents that these particular students wind up taking leadership roles with the kids from that class in other environments, like they were in plays together. And like the, the, the kids who were the mentees to that student become mentees at this school play to this student. They sent me pictures and it was just like so freaking heartwarming. But um, anyway, yeah, that. What a thing to nurture. It's not just, it's, so it's in, it's this, uh, yeah, the skill, the focal point, the the building and exchanging of value, whatever that you're there to participate as a as a creative mechanism and service of something and some audience, that's important too. But then there's this other layer of this culture of 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 learning and sharing and and encouraging and and uh, practicing and growing mm-hmm. that you can layer on top of it, and it, it's it's an upgrade for everybody. Yeah. So I mean I guess I guess I shared that just to reinforce the idea that you were describing for any teaching artists who are listening that if you're not doing that consider doing that. Uh, but I want to I want to tangible. It's really specific. Yeah, it's I mean, it's yeah. not like some other anecdote from a different thing. Like that's awesome. I like you've mentioned that practice before and it's 100% that that dynamic of saying we're creating a learning uh like we celebrate uh learning and learners uh so here's some structure to it. <laughs> I, I and I hear, I think this is another layer to it too that is like just intrinsic to who you and I are as people. But I think it's worth bringing into into language for the purposes of, of this discussion. Is I recently was um, hanging out with an artist, a fellow author, whose son was with her, and he is making mini comics. He's like nine or ten years old, and she's like, "Oh, would you mind spending a few minutes with my son and talk?" Because like I don't make comics, you know, I make children's books, but my son makes comics. I'm like, yeah, I'd be, I'd be delighted to. Are you, talk, are you kidding me? Talking to a kid about comics is the best thing in the world. And so I sit down with this young man and I talk with him about what he's doing. And then, you know, we have a nice time and we say our goodbyes. And then she messages me afterwards and she's like, you know, my son couldn't stop talking about you the whole ride home. And he was saying how it was so great how he didn't, if I'm remembering the language right, he didn't just pat me on the head and say how nice that you're doing comics. You know, and she said, she said, so in other words, do you mean like he treated you with with respect, like a fellow author? And he's like, yeah, he treated me with respect. You know, and it's like, that's part of this mentor mentee thing too, is that, and it should come as no surprise to anybody who's ever listened to our show. Like we're not into hierarchies, right? So like, even though it's mentor mentee, it's much more equal footing, right? And it's much more, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the, there's a pragmatism to the hierarchy. The hierarchy involves, um, it's like mutual acknowledgement and um, and respectful exchange of, of of skills and ideas, and it's not that uh, uh, yeah because f- like hierarchy for the ritualistic um, uh, pushing of power that's pointless and not in service of something that uh, yeah that's that sucks I, and and I don't I don't honor that but then there's a little, there's a function to what you're describing that I'm not trying to nitpick that I'm saying that there is this sort of like, maybe there's a better word than hierarchy, but there is this natural structure that an acknowledgement in that structure for how people can exchange things and, and say that, well, um, I put more weight on this, this feedback you're giving me because of your, your, your skill and the way you convey it and how you uh, um, seem to respect me as a mentee or whatever. Right. And then that's, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not about the hierarchy, which is, I think, are we getting close to final Uh, thought? I think we are getting close to final thought, but yes, yes, to put, to put a fine point on it, um, is that it's, it's treating the mentor and mentee treat each other with respect. This isn't a a situation where the mentor says, okay, well, you little dilettante, I'm going to bang you into shape. I'm going to take you through my crucible of training. Maybe, maybe some people are attracted to that kind of training. I'm, I'm not particularly a fan of it, but, um, but, but yes, to treat each other with mutual respect and to, in, there's a, an acknowledgement of the difference of perspective and experience, certainly. But um, 
you know, I'm going to keep coming back to this idea of like leadership is service. And so I'm going to always respect the people who show up with a serious intent. Um, and I'm going to treat them with respect. Now, that's not to say that, like, for instance, like I was just having this conversation with my former student and we were talking about classroom management. And, you know, I've done I've said things to students that are borderline negging. Like when it, when it's like a really obstreperous student who's really trying to give me the business, who really wants to play games with me, I'd be like, all right, we're going to play games, you know, and they'll say like, you know, I'll be do, going through the business with, with my teaching the class and going through some kind of concept of, of comics art and there'll be like 25 kids in the room and this one kid is just like I just really want to be the funny guy and I want him to acknowledge that I'm funny and I'll, I'll go through all this stuff and I'll be like any questions thoughts or wonderings and this one kid will raise his hand and I'll be like yeah and he'll say I understood exactly nothing that you said and I'll say then I guess you just didn't listen hard enough you know and then we just move on <laughs> right it's like I see what you're doing I see the game you're playing and I'll play back and you know, and I'll come work with you individually if you if you're really lost. But if you're just trying to give me the business just to be like a little funny guy, you know, it's like I'm ready to play that game too. So it's a but that's how it it's 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 almost like it would be hard to be in an actual mentor mentee situation that would have that interaction. Yes, because yes, there's sort of a buy in to the exchange already, yeah. right? Where that that person hasn't bought into that to that level of a mentor mentee situation in yeah. in my opinion, and uh, and it reminds me that. Like you can create any kind of system of, of knowledge exchange or, or value or whatever. And people who come to it with motivations that are in alignment and in convenient alignment with why you made it, it's going to flow more smoothly based on your assumptions. But someone who's yeah. like, I'm here to shake it up and they're outside <laughs> your assumptions. And so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, I don't know if that, I don't, I, I don't think you're negating in that case. I think you're, um, Find a way, finding a way to channel that person's energy who it wasn't aligned with your assumptions into some at least pos- neutral or positive direction. Yeah. All right. Um, can we like get at just like some general thoughts that you might have on like, cause I know there's gonna be people who are like, this is all great, like doing mentoring, but how do I be a mentee? Right. It's like, there's, how do I find somebody to help me level up? Um, yeah. Okay. Let's try that as a final thought or, or are we going to go, go there? Right. Okay. So that eyebrow was like, not final thought. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> this ain't final thought eyebrow. So, okay, fine. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Wait, no, wait, no, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm taking it back. I'm going to say, let's do that as final thought, because I think we are, we talked about reverse mentoring throughout the discussion and this whole, you teach me, I teach you thing. So, yeah. And I think it's a weird term. I want to, I, I don't know where it comes from. I mean, so I do think it's an interesting final thought in that, like, um, it, when you look at a culture of formal authority and something of like, there's meant to be a deference, I think deference comes naturally through respectful exchange of ideas and problem solving and stuff and listening to one mm-hmm. another. And, and when you have the skill, you share the skill. If it doesn't fit when you are meant to, it doesn't, don't force it. If it doesn't fit, just, you know, yep. um, you know, be there for where this person's at, meet them where they're at. And then they're, they're going to probably find a way to, to behave in a similar way if they haven't learned how to do that already. And the like reverse mentoring is, is this weird label where I think it just kind of fits in, in um, organizations that feel better with hierarchy. We're like, okay, we'll do this. Um, you can teach up the chain, but we got to call it something special. It's like, okay, whatever. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it comes from the coolest place. Like, who knows? Like, if, it, if I don't know. Yeah. Maybe even if, if, like, Mr. Rogers himself labeled that, then I'll eat every word there. But I'm suspicious yeah. of the that phrasing because it's kind of like, isn't that what mentoring is anyway? Right, right, it's, right. Yeah. It, it, it's like, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay. So, so in, in about two minutes, we're going to come back and with final thought, which is going to be like, well, how do we think about finding a mentor? Um, so before we do that, we got to thank some other people who make the show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make stuff. Uh, we make books, we make games, we make, uh, you know, classes and do mentoring of ourselves. And we do mentoring ourselves rather. And then we bring these thoughts into the show that we make. And the thing that I make that I hope you will check out right now is Boulder and Fleet, Mining for Trouble, which you can find at books.jdros.com. That's the short link to it. It's on IndiePlanet.com if you use IndiePlanet as a service. And uh, it's a 92-page full-color 
graphic novel, graphic novella. I'm not sure what you would call it. It's a comic book. It's a long comic book, and it's about two best friends, a bear and a bird, who go off on adventures together. The bird wants to be really famous as an adventurer, and she thinks that that means conquering foes and fulfilling her destiny. Uh, Boulder would rather make friends with everybody along the way, and so there's a tension and a dynamic between the two of them. It's lighthearted. It's all ages. It's really aimed at kids, but I think adults would enjoy it too, and you can find it. You can purchase it. You can get a, a digital download, or you can get a print edition of the book at Books dot jdrozd.com now speaking of mentoring rob yeah jersey what's this new thing that you made well this is early in the launch but here we are um so my my um my partner in a variety of things uh kate shield stenzinger and i i have are, are launching a business for uh, for coaching and a few different kinds of coaching, which, I mean, it's a form of mentoring and um, uh, you can learn more about that at shieldstenzinger.com. And the gist of it is that I, I have a focus on uh, creative process and design coaching where individuals or, te- or teams who are looking to sort of level up, right? A lot of the things we've, we've podcasted about, whether that's, you know, br- you know, breaking through some kind of stuck situation or if it's about, uh, you know, collaborating together better. Um, yeah. Uh, can help individuals or teams uh, navigate that kind of thing. And, and that's the gist of what, what the coaching arrangement is. It's not consulting. It's not coming up and prescribing stuff. It's listening and skillfully and working together to help um, to, you know, help a coachee, a participant get, you know, get through the thing because they have the ability, they've got the knowledge, you've got the ability and knowledge to to navigate it and uh, a coach can help. So, uh, and what Kate focuses on is, uh, you know, life coaching for individuals and couples. And she, she does similar things in a way. If you're like, yeah, I'd rather be coached by Kate, go ahead, sign up for her. <laughs> uh, that's totally cool. Uh, we're, you know, we're in the, we're, we're in the same business. We've got slightly different styles. What's funny is you've probably encountered Kate if you're a listener of the show, uh, because she's been a co-host and a guest at, at different times. So yeah, that's the, if you're yeah curious to learn more, if you're wanting to just stay tuned for updates, we've got a, like a newsletter sign up, uh, and um, we actually have some uh, discovery sessions available. That it's easy to just go to the site and schedule a free conversation. Shieldsstenzinger.com for those who are listening in the audio. Um, okay, and if you are listening to this. Uh, podcast in a podcatcher or audio player, wherever you listen to the show, if you can give us a five-star rating, that helps more people find the show as well. If you're watching this video on YouTube, giving it a thumbs up helps more people find the show. What's the mechanism on promoting shows on on st- uh, Twitch, Rob? Do you know? Well, you can like and follow. Um, okay. And, uh, and then I suppose just sharing it around socially, that helps too. Okay. But I think that primarily it's the following stuff. I'm kind of new around here, so... <laughs> So follow us on, on on Twitch. I keep wanting to say Stitcher. It's twitch.tv slash lean into art. <laughs> okay. Final thought time. Um, yeah. How do you find a mentor? Because you ha- you shared the story of how there was like a, you discovered a mismatch. You found somebody who was dynamic and encouraging and you were like, I, I could learn a lot from this person. And then they said no. And then in retrospect, you're like, actually, yeah, I see how we wouldn't fit together. But how do you find a mentor who fits, especially when you think about like in my experience where I was do, beginning work as a teaching artist and I had no idea what the field even was. I got lucky in meeting two very d- deeply passionate and well-connected people. Mm, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. I mean, be, just essentially uh, if you being ready for the opportunity is one of the, probably the best ways, but then uh, like how you just, dis- you, you can be, you can in, increase your chances and, and sort of, uh, I guess, mess with the, the, the weight of your luck al- algorithm, right? By essentially being in a place where you, uh, re- you really care about, you're serving some organization that's in, this, in a space that you're interested in and that you're growing in. There's probably people around there that, that you're going to find that, that unofficially you can learn from quite well, but maybe even officially. There's, there's potential mentors. There's mentor potential in that situation like in like essentially in your day job being of service somewhere right and then i think uh similarly you have the the optional communities that you go participate in and this podcast is an is an example outcome of me and you right where uh i was a participant in the art and story supreme community 
And uh, through that, we, um, you know, we connected. And there's, there's something about like when you, you, like you've shared this example many times, I think it's very relevant, but it's the high idea that when you, when you go to a gathering, uh, you know, physically, virtually, what have you, and being, you know, curious, being a listener, trying to understand, uh, observe, and then seeing where, uh, where you're, where, what you have to contribute would fit in. Some communities, it's pretty formal. Oh gosh, because uh, come, I'm going to jump around. Like so, Dave Say, right? Dave Say has been a guest on the show uh, mm-hmm. a good number of times. Uh, like he runs a community that is um, based on the 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 chat application Discord, right? That is a very open but somewhat formal community where there's a lot mm-hmm. of channels for particular purposes and stuff. There, those particular purposes are signals of like, go to the one that fits you the most. So like, if you have a combination of a community and they're providing signals, or if they're not, you can find them if you, you know, patiently look and listen and then start to contribute. And through the exchange, you'll start to find the people who are helpers. And then you find, then there's a bit of effort, right? Whereas it's a shorter leap if you're in an organization that's already about what you believe in and there's people there that you're just sort of, you know, looking for, you kind of have a, a, um, it's a shorter path, but it's, it's possible. Right. So the, we found this connection Jersey where um, I shared a video in art and story Supreme because there was a thing that I found that was, cause it was one of those things where it's like, what do I share? What do I say? And I shared a few things here and there, but then mm-hmm. I found a way to be helpful. Yeah. Because I, 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 there's a problem I wanted to solve. And I'm like, hey, you know what? If other people have this problem, check out this. Yeah. And that started where um, sort of an informal mentoring arrangement between Jersey and I, where he's like, oh, this person likes to teach. And then I ended up, you know, providing work, uh, a workshop at, a, at an event. And oh, that's that. right. Yeah, that was the up fair after that, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, and that's, that's like one of my one of my kryptonites is, is if somebody shows up and they offer something that is genuinely helpful and then they don't make a big pr- production out of it, just say like, Hey guys, I found a thing that helps, you know? And then like, leave it there. Right. So I'm like, okay, who was that mass man? You know, like that, 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 that is like the fast track to my, uh, affection and regard. Uh, Jeremy Burley was another guy in those days. Uh, he, I mean, the art and storyers was the, the language that we used for the listeners. And, and I remember Jeremy gave us a lot of comments over the years, like re- responding to things we said, and then like it turned into these helpful things that helped guide the community and like help us define what our community was. Um, so yeah, it, that, that is my reflex is, I like to go to events where I know people are operating in a field that I want to be more involved in and I listen for how I can be of service. Now, I think that that is very well and good for guys of our disposition, right? We, I think we, we both, I think it's fair to say that we're both very patient people. We have even 10 years ago had a certain level of skill acquisition that we had achieved. And so it didn't feel like it was very, um, there wasn't much risk involved with offering help. I offered help many times over the years where it was like, they looked me in the eye and went, no, (laughs) you know, that, that hurts, right? Like it, it doesn't feel good to be like, Hey, I think what you do is awesome. And Hey, can I help you with this? No. All right, I'm sorry. I'll I'll go over there and stand in the corner and pretend like nobody's looking at me. Um, but uh, but I'm thinking about the person who maybe doesn't feel like they have like a huge backpack full of skills yet. Uh, maybe is a little bit more uh, on on a spectrum of anxiety. Maybe leaning more towards anxious and like this idea of interacting with somebody is feels like it has a lot more risk attached to it. Um, what do we say to that? I don't know, right? Because like. In that case, you really want to have a plan, don't you? I yeah, that's that's where um, I mean, if if you are comfortable enough to cross the threshold to becoming a lurker, you know, then yeah. then you have the potential to acquire to to just see lots of things happening in different communities because mm-hmm. um, you know communities where um, like where are you a beginner? At like what what kind of label are you giving yourself as a beginner? There's going to be some place where you're welcome that that has some signal they're sharing. I mean, guaranteed YouTube videos, uh, forums, uh, 
threads on larger things like um like the the whole stack what, what what's that called uh you got like stack overflow and like this and that oh, like all sorts of interest what what are what are they called it's a big forum thread community of of many forum thread communities right okay and yeah so there's places to lurk safely reddit um but but and and then you're sort of i guess following a signal for where maybe a place where you you know feel feel safe the other way to feel safe is to look for a, someone who is you know is doing this more professionally like maybe you sign up for an educational institution that has those kinds of things and so a lot of the ambiguity is taken out of it mm -hmm. it's, it's just part of a service you're signing up for and I would also say, going back to you know the, the story you shared, Rob, is that um, potentially maybe it's worth going through and trying to define for yourself, like even just writing out a list, as simple as writing out a list, is what is it about this particular person or community that you find compelling and does it track with what you want to do? Does it line up to it? Can, can you find harmony between what you think you want to do and what they are doing? Because sometimes it, it is utterly nonverbal. It is totally just like a gut reaction. And you're just like, I don't, and I know I've experienced this myself. I meet people in the community. And I'm like, okay, whatever they're doing, I got to be close to that. Like, that's the language in my head. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know, but I just want to be over there. Right. And like, and sometimes I'll run to it and be like, whoa, 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 that isn't what I wanted at all. And I have to like scoot back and run the other way. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? It's well, like, it's, it's like, like, so you're using that. That's, that's very functional to say that, yeah. um, you haven't thought it through. You don't have to, you can you just proceed with some kind of, you know, caution and, and, uh, you know, go there, go to, uh, events and observe. So there's, you can observe and be a lurker in forums. You can be a lurker at an event too, like a trade or industry thing mm -hmm. and um, just sort of walk around with your headphones on, but then look at what people are doing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, but ha going that extra step of thinking about why, why do you want to connect more with this person and learn from them in a more, in a, in a more um, higher bandwidth arrangement? Right. A more higher bandwidth arrangement is something where there is an exchange and mm -hmm. you will get direct feedback from them, not indirect in general, where it's like they're they're teaching in a pre-recorded thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. It, yeah, that's um hmm. it's tough because it takes it takes some risk. And you know, as you pointed out, there's yeah. there's a vul vulnerability um in the informal in the land of informal, you know, arrangements. So, yeah, and I and I feel like it, it, in a lot of ways, what we're describing is stacked in the favor of the extrovert, and that's that's no. that's worth acknowledging. That like, yeah, and 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 I've talked with enough people in the comics industry who are very introverted because, as I've you know, we've described many times in the show, is like, do you like sitting alone at a desk drawing for hours on end, not talking to people? Hey, comics is for you. So it, it attracts a lot of <laughs> introverted people who have to train themselves to be more extroverted. And that's not a fun thing to describe to somebody because I, as I'm learning more about introversion, it sounds like it's an exceedingly painful experience to have to walk into a room full of people talking. Whereas for me, while there's some shyness and some reluctance to just dive into a conversation, it's comparatively speaking, I acknowledge that it's a relatively effortless affair for me. And so I just want to make sure that we left some space for that too, saying like, yep, if you're introverted, this is going to be super tough. But that's super reasonable. Did you think, yeah. do you think we helped in that regard? Um, I, I think, I think we acknowledged and, and I, I hope we empathized. Um, okay. I don't know if we, and I think we gave some, some ways to, to think about it, but, um, Many, anyone who identifies as, as an introvert, introvert, introvert has reactions to what we shared. It'd be great to learn. Um, yes. Yeah, I agree. I would love to hear from you and hear how you're struggling with this specifically or how you're engaging with this specifically and we can bring it to a future episode. Mm -hmm. So definitely cool. I think we did another perambulation around a topic, Rob. I think so too, Jersey. That was a okay. podcast. That was a podcast. All right. We record the show weekly, uh, most of the time on Thursdays when we can, and we stream it live on twitch.tv slash Lena to art collect as a podcast at YouTube patreon.com slash lean into art and lean into art.com and we'll be back soon with another episode until then i have been jersey drozd of lean into art.com and jersey drozd on instagram 
And I've been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and Rob Stenzinger on Instagram. And okay, touch. bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.